Okay, welcome back. This is the ENG 460, and today we're going to look at the add immediate. I think this is number 12. All right, so I've got QT spam up here, and let's uh, reinitialize the simulator so everything's all cleaned out. All our registers are zero. And let's load a file. Let's load um, add immediate. All right, that's the one we're going to do. Okay, so I've loaded add immediate, and here is your file. Now remember, you know, the stuff on the right is the code that you actually type into your um, Word or your notepad or whatever editor you're using file, the .s file. And then, you know, these guys get converted. You know, for example, the add command gets converted to an equivalent MIPS command over here. And um, remember, load immediate is a pseudo command that actually gets converted to an or immediate load address is a uh, pseudo command that gets uh, converted to a load upper immediate okay and maybe an or immediate depending on how big that address is okay. um, so let's bring in the um, let's bring in this file here okay. so we have uh, the um, add immediate here and of course you know it's the same thing we have our comments here okay. then we have our data segment right here okay the preprocessor directive the data word Okay. And then I've got two entries in my data segment. First one's called title, next one's called NT. They're ASCII Z, which means they're ASCII null terminated. I've got two carriage returns here, and then I've got the string add immediate demo program, and then I have two more carriage returns there. And then I have my NT, which is an ASCII string null terminated, and it's equal to normal termination. All right, now in the text segment, which is the third part, is the remainder of this stuff. Okay, first thing you have is the text keyword. And uh, I want to give my main program a name because we'll have sub-procedures later. So I use the global preprocessor directive, and I declare my main, and then I associate it with the block of code that immediately follows it because I'll put a bunch of subroutines and procedures after this, and I can use the same technique to identify those. Well, if you look at this code, the first thing I do is I print out my title. Well, I'm going to print out my title. What's my title? My title is Add Immediate Demo Program. Okay. I load Immediate V0 with 4. I load the address of title in A0, and I call syscall. That prints out title. Okay. Now, before I do any Add Immediate, let's go back and remember the other type of Add. There was an Add Register. This was an R-type command. R-type means it operates on three registers. It has a source register, a target register, and a destination register. I load up S0 with quad 1, I load up S1 with quad 2, I add S1 to S2, and I store the results in S2. Or no, I add S1 to S0, and I store the results in S2. Okay, so that's just your R-type add command. Well, sometimes it's, you may not want to add two registers, but you may want to add a constant to a register. Well, that's the whole point of add immediate. Add immediate is an I-type command. It's an immediate command, so it doesn't operate on three registers. It has a target register and a uh, destination register. And what you're doing is you're taking the target register and you're adding a constant to it and you're storing it in the destination register. So you basically have S0 plus 1, the contents of S0 plus 1, and store it into S1. Did I say that right? Contents of S0 plus 1 equals get stored in S1. I keep thinking I'm saying it wrong. All right, well, so what I do is I um, load immediate. I put uh, quad 0, quad F into S0. Then I take the contents of S0, I add 1 to it, and I store it into S1. Then down here, I take, um, let's see, I load immediate on S0. I put quad F, quad F into S0, which is negative 1. And then I do an add immediate on the contents of S0, which is quad F, quad F, negative 1. And I add 5. So negative 1 plus 5 should put 4 into S1. And then on the next block of code, again, I load S0 with quad F, quad F, which is a negative 1. And then I do an add immediate on contents of S0, which is quad f quad f negative 1 and I add that to a negative 5 which should give me a negative 6 and then this guy will have some f's in the upper portion to indicate that it's a negative 6 and then when I'm done I just do my usual stuff I load v0 with 4 indicating I'm about to print a string what string am I going to print out I'm going to print out the nt string normal termination that's defined up here in my data section and then I do I, I load the address into a0 and call says call and when you exit your program, you load v0 with 10, and then you call syscall. All right? So let's save this guy in case I made any changes. Go back to QT spim, say reinitialize and load file. We'll bring in that add immediate guy. 
And here's your program. Notice load immediate gets converted to an OR and load address gets converted to a load upper um, immediate uh, since it's uh, not an official MIPS command. Uh, the add command maps straight to an add command because that's an official and then the add immediate maps to here. All right, well, let's go ahead and start this guy. Uh, F10 will allow me to step through. Okay. So I just loaded the V0 register with 4. Well, let's check that out. There you go. V0 register has 4. All right, let's go back to here. And we'll hit F10 again. All right, now I just loaded A0 with the address of title. Well, title was in my data segment, so A0 is going to have like a 1001 quad 0 because that was the first thing in my data segment. Okay. So now I call syscall, and when I do that, that should actually print that thing out. So I need to find my console window. Is my console window around here anywhere? Where's my console window? Yeah, there it is, right there. Let's see, I wonder if I can get those on there. So all I did at this point was I just printed out the console window. Add immediate demo program. Let's bring this over here and see if I can do... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm playing real estate games here. Yeah, maybe we can do something like that. All right. So at this point now, what I'm going to do is I am going to step through with F10. I am going to load S0 with quad 1, S1 with quad 2, and add the 2 and put it in S2. So let's go look at our registers. I put quad 1 into S0, quad 2 into S1, and then I added those two, and I got quad 3 into S2. All right. So let's see. We need to go back to here, QT spam text. And now if we step over with F10, I'm going to load immediate. I'm going to put quad 0, quad F into S0. And now I'm going to do an add immediate of 1 to S0. So if I take quad F plus 1, that should give me 0, 0, 0, 1, quad 0. And that should be in S1. Well, let's go look in S1. So let's see. What we do? We took S0, we added 1 to it, and I got 1, quad 0. Okay. So if I go back to here, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, quad F quad F into S0, which is negative 1. And now I'm going to add a 5 to a negative 1, store the result in S1. All right. Let's go look at our registers. S0 has quad F quad F, which is negative 1. And um, S1, I um, am going to um, add 5 to that. 5 plus a negative 1 is a 4. And that's exactly what we did. We took a negative 1 plus 5 and got 4. Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to keep um, S0 to be quad F quad F, negative 1. But now I'm going to do an add immediate. So I'm going to take negative 1 and add it to a negative 5, which should put a negative 6 into S1. All right. And let's see, there's negative 1. Well, this is, in fact, negative 6, because I took a negative 1, I added a negative 5, I got a negative 6. But that's in 2's complement. If you flip the bits, you're going to get a bunch of zeros, and the A is going to go to a um, 0, 1, 0, 1, which is 5, but then you add 1, you get 6, so that's a negative 6. Okay. Go back to here, and then what do we do at this point? We just print out another message. Let's bring our console window here. So we load up V0 with 4. We load the address of NT into A0. And then I call syscall. And there you go. There was my normal termination in the console window. And then now I hit F10 twice, and the program's done. If I hit F10 again, it'll wrap around the top and start over. All right, so we basically just uh, showed the add command as a review and then introduced the add immediate. You're taking a constant value, and you're adding it to a register, a target register, a source register, and then putting the result in a destination register. All right. Okay, that's enough on add immediate. See you next time.